This is Rhonda Brooks of Farm Journal Media, and I'm here at the first ever Farm Journal Hands-On Week College near McPherson, Kansas, and I'm talking to high-yield expert uh, Phil McNeedham. And Phil, what, what do we got going on here tomorrow? All right, we've got a number of different stops here tomorrow, Rhonda, but one of the first stops that I'm going to be speaking about tomorrow is residue management, and it's a really import, important part in crop production uh, in, in, in general because we need to be able to spread residue as consistently as possible at harvest time, and, and for most producers, they do a good job, but some need to improve, and we're going to be basically giving them some ways, some strategies of how they can improve residue management. We're also going to be talking about seeding, using different seeding systems. And we're going to talk about fertility management. We're going to talk about everything that you need to get a crop established. So we're going to be talking about seed, seed treatments, uh, seeding equipment, seeding depths, all of this. So we're going to be basically highlighting most of the uh, elements that you need to get a crop in the ground and get it out of the ground successfully uh, to create the potential for high yields. And talking also about just the various ways to use their drills to make them more effective. Is that is that true? Is that accurate? Yeah, we've got a Great Plains drill here, and we've also got a John Deere drill here. Um, we're going to be spending about 30 minutes with each of them, basically showing growers what they need to do to get the best performance out of each of those pieces of equipment. We also have uh, Ronan Call Cummins, mm -hmm. who is a high-yield expert uh, in wheat, too. And, and what's Ronan going to be discussing? Ronan's going to be spending most of his time discussing the Great Plains drill, calibration of the drill, in addition to seeding rates, seeding depths, and basic uh, setup procedures with a Great Plains double-disc drill. I'm going to be doing the same uh, on the John Deere drill out here uh, tomorrow afternoon. I know that a lot of farmers have, have just concluded harvest in this area, but is there anything that you would be you know, telling them that they need to be thinking about uh, as they go into next season or as they plan this fall? Well, there'll be a number of things. Obviously, some producers you get further north. Really, about now, is harvest is going on, wheat harvest is going on in central South Dakota. Obviously, a lot of North Dakota has not started yet, and if you get north of the border, they haven't got close to starting yet. It's still green. But, yeah, what I'm standing alongside right now is a really important start of the following crop, and that's a good straw chopper. A straw chopper that's going to size the residue into consistent lengths, but it's also going to spread residue as uniformly as possible across the header width of the combine. Too many producers, I find, are getting headers that are too wide for the combine to spread residue over. This spreader combine, uh, chopper spreader combination will do a good job spreading residue about 35 feet. You struggle if you get beyond 35. Standard John Deere choppers that we've got over here struggle sometimes to get even that width evenly. Sometimes they spread wider, but the, op the, the important word there is, is evenly. So we're going to be spending time uh, discussing residue management in general, but it's obviously important that producers don't get too bit of, big of a head on the front because they're not going to be able to spread residue uh, as evenly as they need to across the harvesting width of the combine. All right, Phil. Well, thank you for your time. And again, thank folks, you. we're here just outside McPherson, Kansas for the Hands-On Wheat College from Farm Journal.